Hello everyone, welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to Mid, uh, well, Mage Mid. Uh, this is Slash, and this was a really nice segue from the Magic ADC episode, which is actually why I did these, in, another reason why I did these in this particular order. But what applies to the Magic ADC and Slash partially applies to the Mage and Slash as well. You are going to have, in most cases, a bit more of a difficult time. I actually picked a really strong early game Mage for this reason, Anubis. He's very powerful in the early game, and that helps quite a decent bit. Um, but, obviously, I still will need to be paying a certain amount of attention, making sure I'm not being too aggressive or being picked off, because I don't have an escape. Uh, things of that nature. We have, a so far, a really good team for this. We've got a nice Dance of Butter there, we've got Gilgamesh, we've got Zingshan. I wonder what Happy Meals FX is going to pick. That's going to be fairly interesting. But anyways, more to the point, your goal with the Mage really doesn't change at all. You're there to deal large amounts of damage to the enemy team. Now, as I've discussed in previous episodes of Slash, covering Slash for different roles, you do have the propensity for unloading large amounts of damage on a Juggernaut, but if you do that, run right afterwards, if possible, because if people are teleporting in either towards the end of your onslaught or right afterwards, you're going to be probably in some pretty deep trouble. Especially if you're a closer range mage, someone like Zong Kui or Hades, who needs to get in a little bit more, uh, closer than most mages. So, you are going to want to be very careful with that, but you can also be there to kind of stand guard over the hunter if you really want to, and just wait to use your abilities until enemies start actually teleporting in. And you can see a little purple ring, actually a series of purple rings, surround a juggernaut whenever somebody's teleporting to it. That goes for yours and theirs. So, you can use that as an indication of, hey, people are teleporting to this, I should get ready to slap some fools, right? And that's generally what you're going to be looking for. So, just kind of keep that in mind, that you could also do that as an option as well. How you approach that is up to you, it also will depend on the situation. For example, if uh, the Juggernaut is pushing up towards your Phoenix, maybe it's worth risking yourself to save the Phoenix, right? Potentially. Maybe the enemy hunter is dead and you know that they can't take the Phoenix as easily because without the Juggernaut, that was what they, you know, they, they were relying on the Juggernaut to deal with the Phoenix and without it, and with their hunter dead, they can't do it, right? As an example, a, a hypothetical situation in which you could see yourself taking the risk to eliminate the Juggernaut. You know, especially with Anubis, and you'll probably see this later on in this match, if I choose to unload my abilities on a Juggernaut and people start teleporting to it, I'm going to have to run, and I don't run that fast, and I don't have that much in the way of escapes either, so if things go south for me, I'm in some decent trouble, because I can't get out as easily. Nope. Ah. That I got first blood. All right, that was worth it then, since I got first blood in that situation. That was that's fine. We'll take that. I am totally okay with that because the the first blood is way more important. I probably should have gotten beads though, retrospectively, but it's too late now. I'm gonna go ahead and clear these for farm purposes. Dan's Burrow coming in for the same reason. There we go. Alright, let's go save. Who is that best at? Nah, she doesn't need saving. Ah, she might need saving. Hold on. Yeah. That works. That works. Alright. Vengeance is ours. Alright, she's just used that. That's actually fairly important, because that means she's going to be vulnerable to a potential slap. Oh, hi. Uh, no. Uh. No. Oh. That's a shame. I almost got out. 
All right, now I'm going to want Sands of Time for the... Primarily for the cooldowns. Since I'll be wanting to stack a certain amount of Lave Steel. Let me see here. Yep, that's fine. And there's Agni. There's a nice wave I can take here. Just gonna throw that down there. I completely with that. You can't, you can't push me when I'm using this. He knows it too. So he's been around the block with here before. This isn't really a problem. Hello. Ah, yeah. I survived that. Oh, good old, good old, but he's gonna get killed in exchange, so that's actually fine. Good attack, good, nice, nice. You know, I'm doing my damage and getting that all prepped up for the, for my allies. I'm gonna go for... Spear the Magus next. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for this. First off, the flat penetration works extremely well with Oop. Anubis's ult. Protection stolen per stack 7, max stacks 3. That is 21 protections down, plus 15. That makes a nice 36, which is most of the protections of your default squishier target, like mages and hunters. Hello. Oh, wow. Good ult. Good ult. I think I hit, got hit by both Hobwa and Agni's ult. Yeah, he has to get out of there. That's an ugly situation. I desperately want Spirit the Magus. I'm not sure I'll need Divine Ruin. I know, yeah, Agni has Divine Ruin, which is part of my problem. I'm not healing up as much as I could be because of that, but that's alright. We can recover this. Alright. I'm going to join up my te with my team over here. That was nice. Oh yeah? That was a mistake, wasn't it now? Okay. Okay. I'm dead. Yeah. They absolutely slapped me down. Gilgamesh picks it up, though. That's fine. That's fine. Gilgamesh is doing really well here. Kick him. Kick him. Oh, he gave you a clean opportunity. That's what you were waiting for, wasn't it? Oh, they got him. Yeah, that was good. That was good. See, it doesn't matter so much if you die as long as you at least take someone with me. In this case, I, I took Charybdis with me. Then I died. But that put the enemies in a bad position for that. This was not intentional, don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm not trying to say, oh, I planned this out. No. It was purely by accident. They were just really into killing me. <laughs> Which, I'm just saying it works out if you are positioned correctly. I happen to be positioned correctly. Which, most mages are going to be. That's pretty common positioning for mages. You know, back line there. They're diving way too deep for this. I don't really like the situation. They went the other way, of course. Hello. Do you have anti-heal? No, you just slap. Okay. I guess that's fair enough. Interesting. He's building pure damage. He's got bluestone. Interesting. So do they have a real front line? No, they don't. The likelihood of me actually needing legitimate... I can actually sell my mana potion. I don't think I'm ever going to need that at this point. The chances of me needing serious penetration is very low now at this point. I'll probably still... Well, I'm going to build Typhon's Fang, obviously, so I'll have 10% penetration. But I really don't think I'm going to need more than that, to be honest. I'm going to take this really quick for the mana. I'm going to see if I can cut Hubble off and left here. Uh... 
He's gonna probably get that. What I'm gonna do is make sure he doesn't get killed in turn. He's not. Where's Tyr? Where's Tyr? That's not worth it. I'm gonna go over here and help Zingshan. Yeah, she's gonna back off real quick. She's not backing off at all. Interesting. She bailed so fast there. Alright. Then she just goes right back in. She's really desperate for something. Nope. Oh, it still shot me. That's a bit unfortunate, but it's not, you know, like, gonna be the end of me. How do you like that, Habo? <laughs> not today, son. Oh, yeah, he's over there. Here he comes. Right. Oh, whoa. He, I did not expect that move, to be honest. He caught me totally off guard there. I had zero idea he was there. That was impressive, honestly. Zero clue he was even there in the first place. Now that I've got that, I want to go for Typhon's Fang. I'll probably have enough to boost a Puri to three at uh, the second stage here, which is going to be really nice, so that way I can use it more frequently, because I really obviously need it. I should have built it first. I'm getting crowd-controlled out all over the place. It's disgusting. So we're going to go ahead and pull that stunt. I'm not sure I'll necessarily build Rod of the Booty. I think Spear of Desolation would probably serve me better at this point. I am assuming Bastet can catch up the two, and she's not even interested. I don't need to be careful when I do this much damage. I'm going to die, though. And he dies to minions, which is interesting. She probably could have jumped on him and taken care of him really quickly. Uh, I doubt he would have been able to react in time to that. Maybe he could have. Maybe I'm wrong. I just don't get the impression he would have been able to. The Gilgamesh fighting this is absolutely courageous. He's got a death toll, though, so I can kind of understand it, but... Oh, that was close. He needs to get out of there, though. Those minions will not kill him. Okay. I'm impressed. I honestly am impressed. I thought for sure he was going down. Okay, so the Agni is doing better. The Hubba is not. Interesting. Well, he's building... Uh, he built pure flat penetration, which is going to be effective against me for now. And will continue to be so unless I decide to build magic protections, which I don't really intend to. Hello. She survives that? Alright. No, I got what I needed out of that. Nope. Ah. Yeah, right now it's basically war between... Myself and the enemy mages, they're definitely going after me. Mostly because I do a lot of damage, and if they leave me alone for long enough, I'm going to reach critical mass. The fact that I have Spear the Magus and Typhon's Fang going on here is not a good time for them. Trying to decide what I really want to use here. Hmm. The Calamitous Rod might be the move. I'm not sure. I'm also kind of bouncing around the idea of Spear of Desolation in my head as well. Or Kronos Pendant for the cooldowns. Hmm. I've got a lot of options, to be sure. Yeah, we're... That hit me? Okay. All right. <laughs> really? We got to stop this juggernaut. Nice job. Very impressive. 
I mean, yeah, he died, but it was a really good job. I'd love to, but... No, I don't have my ults. What? Oh, I accidentally cancelled it. Oh, wow. Alright. That was a major misclick on my part. I would have survived if I hadn't done that. That was stupid. I think I'm gonna go Spear of Desolation. I think the penetration will do me a lot more good. It'll bring them down to basically having no protections against me at all. I'll be basically running true damage, which is huge. It'll give me 10% cooldown, which is which will be nice. I could actually know. What I'll do is I'll grab Spear of Desolation and then I'll finish up with Calamitous Rod. That should push me to where I need to be overall. But I want the I want the spear first for the cooldown and the pen. Pardon me. Can he slow him down enough for us to catch up and kill him? Oh, that was disgusting. Holy cow. That was a massacre. Oh, you goofed it. And now I own you. Here's Tear. I was wondering when you'd show up. Nope. He got me, but they got him in, in turn. That's fine. Is he finally building protections? He is not. None of them have protections. It's very weird. I'm not used to this. We'll just go for Rod of the, Rod of the Booty, and the, pa the passive buff will definitely be triggering very quickly because they don't have any protections. Once I get that up and get my 20% cooldowns from... What is this called? Pendulum of the Ages. I'm going to be absolutely slapping people as long as I'm not getting... Slapped down by Agni and Habwa, who I think are going to be the primary threats to me. But so far, as you can see, you know, it's really this weird balancing act of doing your damage and staying alive. Even if, if you have a choice, deal your damage. Use your whole kit. Don't be afraid of dying if your whole kit is down. Because at the very least, as you've seen throughout this episode, even if you die, your allies can probably pick up your killer. They can pick up those kills that you left behind. Often, if you do a good enough job spreading your damage out, they can often pick up multiple kills. You'll notice that pretty consistently, they've been able to pick up two, sometimes about two kills, I think, is a, a good estimation of how many kills they've been able to take for each time I've died. They have a bunch of juggernauts over here. What the heck? Okay. Okay. Good thing he held him there, because honestly, that would have killed me. And again, that was best dead and I for that, and then they're... Oh, they almost picked him up. They almost picked him up. It was close. So it was a break-even, so that's fine. We're gonna grab this for the cooldowns, uh, while we have the opportunity, actually. Cooldowns are very important for Anubis. My auto-attacks suck. So, <laughs> we don't want to rely on those. Okay, good. Pick up the troop. This, that's excellent. And, yeah, I'm gonna be now just working on the Rod of the Booty. Oh, uh, so close. Alright. They had a good good counter-initiation. That was very strong. They're at the mana buff. That's interesting. I honestly was not expecting that move. He's going with the movement speed. No, he's not. He just has speed buff. That's just the power of a speed buff. All right, fair enough. I'm going to go ahead and grab the mana buff then. Best said isn't going to need me right this moment. There's Tsukiyomi. Actually, I suppose I should pronounce it properly. Tsukiyomi. Let's head left and stall this off. I thought I saw Tsukiyomi there, but I was incorrect. I thought they were going for the, uh... Oh, somebody's made a mistake. <sighs> I 
<laughs> so much damage. You'll notice that, again, the enemy mages pumped all their damage into me for the exact reason of if I'm dead, I can't kill them. Right? It's basically... My my cousin actually put it in a really... It really put it well. It depends on who nukes who first, basically. <laughs> that makes a big difference. They just happened to nuke me while I was nuking somebody else. I mean, again, I took someone with me, which is fine. Unfortunately, in this particular instance, my team was not able to pick up anything else. Well, he picked that up, but I didn't damage Hot Bottle, so I am in no way participant of that. But he did successfully stop their assault. Because I was able to do some damage to Agni before I died. Not enough, by a long shot. If I'd done a little bit more, somebody else would have been able to pick him up, obviously. But, you know, not too bad of an amount. Now, I want to do that. Can we... That is definitely not happening. You gonna dash me? Yep. Nope. Where did he come from? Where did Tyr come from? Hold on. What? He had to have somehow slipped, let me, he had to have somehow gone from here, slipped into here, and then come, unless he blinked over here, but that would be very difficult. I don't think you can blink that far. That was definitely odd. I'm not sure where Tyr came from there. Interesting. That was, there he is again. <laughs> Now, he used his ult on me, which might have had something to do with it. He might have actually been near the Juggernaut and just ulted me, which gets him a little bit more different a distance than Blink, I think. Oh, oh, she almost was able to take advantage of that. No. I knew he was going to try to stun me. If he'd stunned me successfully, I'd be dead. Ah, I put it too too low. I wasn't close enough. Okay, he picked it up. That's fine. Get him. Okay, that's fine. All right. I didn't want to activate that. Thank you. Okay, that's good. That's useful. It's very helpful. That'll give me the burst I need to finish off the mages. Agni already had it, which is why he hits me so hard. Come on, we can take this. I don't want to use my ult for this, though. I don't know why I'm tanking it. That was a good steal. Good steal. That was very unfortunate. Where is he? Did I take him with me? Yes, that's all that matters. <laughs> that was a complete wipe of both teams. That's incredible. I don't see that very often. That's awesome. I've only seen that a couple of times. That's pretty incredible. That's amazing. That's cool. Oh, that's cool. That is that is a lot of fun. <laughs> Alright, so we took the tower. So it's not like the fight was even a tie. The fact that I was able to take him with me, everyone died. We had a juggernaut up, so that's why we took the tower there, obviously. That doesn't even need to be said. But... Because of that juggernaut, technically we won that fight because we got a tower out of it, even if that was unintentional. Thank you. 
Now I gotta rejoin my pals. Oh, hi! There's a lot of damage on him already. That's Hubwa dead. Unfortunately, he took Danzibura with him, which is not ideal. Go ahead and do that for... Hello, who is... I almost killed Tyr with that. Bestet will be able to pick him up, that's fine. That's alright. Alright. Uh, they won that fight. They have a Juggernaut and they took three of us for two of them. That was not a great fight for us. And they're still 100% damage. Interesting. You know what might possibly be worth it? Maybe? No. No. They're building for anti-tank for some unholy reason. Well, I can kind of understand that. I was going to splash in uh, Mantle Discord, but I don't think that would actually make that much of a difference. They actually have good enough penetration for the most part where that would not make that much of a difference. I'd be better off doing the full damage that I've got now. Holy cow. Alright. I must confess that I was not expecting that much damage. I didn't even get to use my ult. I should have started with my ult, to be completely honest. That was a mistake on my part. I should have gone full in on ult. No, we don't need to surrender this. Gilgamesh can save it. He just needs to take out Agni. You know, that's that's alright. Now, despite the fact that we lost, the fact that they had two mages, and I actually played pretty well overall, and I was also able to demonstrate the really big thing that you have to watch out for, which is being out of position, getting whacked, etc. That's fine. Did I just crash? I did. No, I did not. Okay, that's... Miraculous. I thought for sure I was going to crash there. Um, but, you know, it was a good match for all mages involved. Um, Hobwa did well at the end. He really made a nice recovery. Agni did fantastic, but Agni outranges a lot of mages. That's actually one of the problems with Anubis versus Agni. Agni is one of the better mages for pretty much any mode because of his safety. I chose Anubis because he's one of my favorite mages, and I just really like the presence he has against the Juggernaut. You could see at the end there, their, what was that, their last Juggernaut on the left lane, where I was able to exert a lot of pressure and damage on the tier who teleported in, and I could see him teleporting in, and I was able to do a lot of damage to him. I still died, but I was able to deal a lot of damage with him where Bastet was able to easily pick him up. And that's kind of what you need to do. Ideally, you don't die in a fight, but if you know you're going to, bust out as much damage as possible. Like I said, my mistake in that last fight was I didn't start with my ult, which would have been pivotal because that would have been maximizing my damage ult, then the Grasp of the Dead, then the Locusts at that point. I also wasn't paying enough attention to my surroundings consistently in that match, which is a problem I have when I play Mage. If you have a bit more awareness than I do, you wouldn't get killed as often. I probably died twice because I wasn't paying enough attention to my surroundings. That last death to the Hobwa, I could have easily avoided if I just noticed there was a Hobwa behind me. And I looked down that way too, and I still didn't see him. So that's 100% on me, not noticing him somehow. And then there was the tear that uh, spiked me with his ult. That, was, that death could have been avoided if I'd been more aware of his position. Um, but it's just more of a mindset, it's, it's habits you have to form that I just haven't formed because I don't consistently play mage. Um, it, mage mids have probably already developed these, um, but these are things, if you're new to smite, which is what the point of the series, if, is, if you're new to mage, let me be a bit more specific, um, these are things you, you kind of have to watch out for. And you might be thinking, well, professor, a lot of people have to have a certain amount of situational awareness, and that's true. But supports are really focused on the enemy group at large. They're looking at the cluster. Um, it's not often that they they need to pay attention to stragglers because that's usually the Dominion of Assassins. 
Uh, so I'm just not 100% in the habit of noticing people being out of position or whatever. I'll notice this if someone's missing, but at that particular point when the tear killed me, and when the hotball killed me, there was no indication that, you know, they were grouping up or anything because there would just been a fight. Everyone was scattered around, you know, things like that. Um, so, yeah, that's just me not having those habits fully formed. Partially formed, yes. Fully formed, definitely not. Um, and that's really where you have to pay attention, right? So... I hope this helped you um, understand how to mage in Slash. Like I said, this was a pretty good example from three different mages. This was a fantastic game for this. Um, but yeah, if you like this, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, please ignore me. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, ideas, suggestions, or requests, please leave them down in the comment section below. And thank you all very much for joining me, and have a great 24 hours.